Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Consumer Actions video on the newly updated graphic novels or fotonovelas from the Federal Trade Commission. These are graphic novels that help consumers spot and avoid scams. My name is Nelson Santiago, and I'm a community outreach manager with Consumer Action. I'm glad that you're watching the video today, and I'm really glad to welcome Gemma de las Eras, who is a consumer education specialist with the Federal Trade Commission in the Division of Consumer and Business Education. Gemma is going to talk to us about the fotonovelas, um, how, why, the, why the FTC created them, um, how consumers can use them to avoid scams, and how community organizations like those that are part of Consumer Actions Network can use them in their community education work. Gemma is also going to talk to us about what consumers they do can do if they spot one of these scams or if they actually fall victim to one of these scams. So we're, we're really excited that you're here, Hema, and uh, you should have control of the, uh, the mouse already. Um, we can talk a little bit more after your presentation. Please go ahead. Thank you, Nelson. I really appreciate that warm introduction and hello, everyone. Uh, first, I wanna tell you a little bit about the FTC. We are the nation's consumer protection agency, and we stop we work to to stop fraud deception and unfair business practices and we do this in several ways uh, through enforcement the ftc does investigations sues companies and people that break the law and it tries to get money back to people whenever possible many of those cases are based on the reports that the ftc gets from people who talk about scams and dishonest practices that they see even if they don't lose any money we also work on education and outreach. The FTC tells people about their rights and businesses about their responsibilities. And we do that in print, online, in person, sometimes virtually like we're doing today or through videos. The FTC shares how to spot and avoid scams, how to report them, and how talking about a scams with uh, talking about scams with anyone helps to protect not just yourself, but also your network. Finally, the FTC can't do this alone, and we work with groups like Consumer Action. The FTC tries to amplify the message and reach a broader audience that way. So moving on to what we're gonna be covering today, um, I'm going to tell you about using graphic novels or fotonovelas to help educate the Latino community. I'm going to share some examples of the fotonovelas the FTC has created that talk about scams we know impact the Latino and many other communities. I'll also go over how to report fraud to the FTC in multiple languages and where to go for more free consumer education materials in Spanish and also in other languages. Now, fotonovelas are effective educational tools because they're easy to read, they use storytelling to engage the reader, and they offer practical advice to help spot and avoid some common scams as we've been talking. Uh, also, we know that fotonovelas are used in the Latin American countries to educate people about health issues, government services, and other topics. So we know it's a format that many people who come from Latin America are used to, and therefore they're more likely to pick them up and read them. We have eight fotonovelas in total, and the stories are based on reports to the FTC or scams that we've heard from community partners. Each fotonovela tells the story of people who experience a scam or a bad business practice and how to deal with it and what they learn from the experience. Now, let me show you a few of the FTC graphic novel series. Let's get started with government impersonators. And this is, by the way, the first fotonovela that we produced. So for several years now, impersonator scams stopped the list of reported scams to the FTC. Scammers pretend to be someone that you trust, like a government official, um, a known business, a friend, or a family member perhaps a potential love interest or tech support, and they try to get your money or personal information. That is exactly Sonia's experience in the fotonovela. So in uh, this story, Sonia receives a call from someone saying that they're from the government and that she wants money. But of course, after sending money, she realizes that it was a scam. 
So what Sonia learned is that the government doesn't call, text, or email people out of the blue with threats or promises of money. Um, caller IDs can be faked. So if you're not sure, um, contact the agency at a number that you know to be true. Never the one that uh, they call you from. Uh, never click on any links or call any numbers that they give you. Uh, and don't wire money. Pay with gift cards, payment apps, cryptocurrency. If you send money using any of these methods, it's like sending cash. And it's nearly impossible to get it back once it's sent. No government agency, uh, that's something to keep in mind, no government agency or legitimate business will ask you to send money that way. That's not how it works. And another consumer problem that we know impacts the uh, Latino community is fake business opportunities. The income scams fotonovela tells the story of two friends, Rocio and Fatima, who are looking to make some extra money. And this fotonovela is actually based on a case that the FTC filed against the company that promoted uh, work at home opportunities reselling products. Of course, after investing hundreds of dollars, most people didn't get what they were promised or they got bad quality products that they couldn't sell. Scammers, as always, make promises that simply aren't real, like that you're going to get rich uh, working just a few hours a day, or they'll dem demand money up front or sensitive information like your social security number. And if you give it to them, they might steal your identity, take your money, or both. So in the graphic novel, Fatima avoids the scam because her friend Rocio actually shares what happened to her. And based on that experience and hearing from her friend and what happened to her, she was able to avoid the scam. And here's how you can spot and avoid this scam. Do some research. Search online for the name of the company or the person who's hiring you. Add the word scam, review, or complaint to your search. See what other people are saying, because you might find out that they've scammed other people. Take your time. Talk to someone that you trust and describe them the offer. Ask them what they think. And just keep in mind that explaining the offer to someone else will actually give you some time to think about it. And the last one, stop communicating with anyone who tells you to act now or anyone who discourages you from checking out the company and finding out more information. Now, another here's another scam that we know impacts Latino, and that's notario scams. That is when someone who is not a lawyer or authorized to give immigration advice promise to give you some sort of legal help. In this fotonovela about notario scams, Pedro actually avoids a scam after hearing about his cousin's experience, whose uh, picture on the screen there, asking questions and talking to a friend. So unfortunately, the cousin here already gave money to the notario, but uh, after talking to friends and talking to her, uh, Pedro is actually able to uh, avoid this scam. And in many, the reason why these scams are so prevalent is because in many Latin American communities, the term notario or notary public means that a person's an attorney or has some sort of legal training. And that's not true in the United States. Only attorneys and people who have been accredited by the US Department of Justice can give you legal advice. Anyone else is just taking your money. Sometimes the bad advice will hurt you, your chance to immigrate lawfully or adjust your legal status. To avoid this type of problem, don't go to a notario for immigration or legal help. Don't sign blank immigration forms or any forms that have false information about you or your situation. Don't pay for immigration forms. The official forms from the US Citizenship and Immigration Services or USCIS are free, so there's no need to pay for them. And don't let a notario or anyone else keep your original documents. Now, that was just a brief overview of three of our eight fotonovelas. At ftc.gov graphic novels, you'll find the series in English online. 
They're also available in Spanish at fdc.gov slash fotonovelas, where you can order free copies of the Spanish language fotonovelas and also bookmarks to distribute in your community. Now we know that scammers, as we've been talking about, are very good at what they do. And sometimes no matter how careful someone is, it can happen. We pay a scammer or give personal information. If that happens, here's what to do. Our advice is this, if you send money, contact the company you used as soon as possible. Tell them that it was a scam and ask them to give you your money back or reverse the charge. It might not work, but it is always worth trying because in some cases you might be able to get your money back. So that's always something to keep in mind and try first. Now, if you share personal information like your social security number, the scammer could try to use that information to open accounts on your behalf and steal your identity. The best thing to do is go to identitytheft.gov or robodeidentidad.gov immediately. See what steps to take, including how to monitor your credit, to watch for accounts you don't recognize, and report any problems. This interactive site will create the customized plan um, for you based on the information that you share and whether anyone has uh, already misused your personal information. And if you see or experience scams or other consumer problems, we want to know about it. Even if you didn't lose money, the FDC uses these reports to investigate and bring law enforcement cases. And reports also help the FTC know what scams to alert people about so they can protect themselves, their friends, and family. You can report in English at reportfraud.ftc.gov and in Spanish at reportefraude.ftc.gov. In other languages, you can call 877 382 4357 and select option three to talk with a translation translator who will take your report. Now we know that not everyone feels comfortable giving information to a government database, but you can file anonymously or work with an advocate or, or an advocate or someone else who can file um, on your behalf. Now let's talk about other free materials we have available and how to stay in touch with us. I already shared how to order fotonovelas, but I also want to mention that we have information in other languages online and in print, how to avoid a scam and scams in your small businesses, um, for example, are available in Korean, Vietnamese, and simplified Chinese. You can order those and um, other publications at ftc.gov slash bulk order. And if you have your phone handy, there's a very simple way to keep up with the latest scams and share them with your community. Please sign up to get consumer alerts at ftc.gov slash consumer alerts or ftc.gov slash alertas de consumidor to get them in Spanish. You can also sign up at ftc.gov slash business alerts and receive the business blog with advice and information to help small business owners avoid scams and also the steps that they can take. Now, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. My email is on the screen. It's G. Delas Heras at ftc.gov. And thank you so much for your time and attention today. Please don't forget to check out ftc.gov slash graphic novels. And now I'll hand it back to you, Nelson. Thank you, Hema, for that wonderful presentation. So much information that consumers can use and that the community organizations that, that uh, work on educating consumers that, that they can use in, in educating their community. So thank you for, for making all of this information available to us. And also thank you for letting us know how we can reach you uh, later on. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, when we're first watching something, we may not be ready 
with any questions, but down the line, there may be a question for you. So um, thank you for making uh, yourself available. And um, speaking of questions, I would like to ask, uh, <clears throat> you mentioned that this is a, these are updated uh, graphic novels, updated fotonovelas. Uh, tell me a little bit more about the earlier editions. Um, did you, how, did you distribute lots of copies? What kind of feedback did you get? What else can you tell us about the earlier editions? So um, we started with one fotonovelas and that one fotonovela, and that was the one on impersonator scams. And really, we have been expanding ever since. We have distributed thousands of copies, and it just became they just became so popular because they're very easy to read and hand out that um, people kept asking for more. So we went from one to now we have eight fotonovelas that people can see online and they can order hard copies in Spanish. And we're hearing that um, some people use them just to start up conversations. Um, they also um, use them, you know, I've heard teachers that, that uh, are teaching Spanish, they, they use them to practice with their students and then they also learn more about scams. So there are many uses uh, for this uh, graphic novel set. Um, people can order for free. Well, that's great to hear. I'm sure there will be a lot of success with these new updates. And we're glad that you reached out to Consumer Action about helping you get the word out because I think they will uh, get a lot of use from, from the consumers who reach out to us and the community groups that work with us. I do, before wrapping this up, I do want to remind people that Consumer Action has our own, we have our own materials that can help consumers with this subject of avoiding scams. Uh, you can find them all on our homepage, which is listed here on the screen. And we also have a Just Say No to Scams module that includes a PowerPoint deck, a lesson plan, a, uh, a guide for consumers on, on avoiding scams. Um, it's, it's a complete module that you can check out at the link that's on the screen. We also put out the Scamgram newsletter that gets issued the middle of each month. If you're not getting it already in your inbox, you'll want to uh, join our email list and using the link that's right on the screen. And finally, uh, I always like to mention our How to Complain booklet. This has been, speaking of popular publications, this has been one of, one of Consumer Action's most popular ones over the years. Uh, it used to sell out, or not sell out because we don't sell it, but it used to be out of stock all the time, but now it lives on the internet um, and is available anytime in English, Spanish, and Chinese, actually. So you can find that on our website. I um, also want to remind people that Consumer Action is a national nonprofit consumer education and advocacy organization. We welcome support from the public. If you uh, are able to make any kind of donation of any amount, we always uh, welcome it. And you can use the information on screen to uh, make a donation. Um, there's also a way to support our work without spending a cent. And that is by subscribing to our YouTube channel and following us on social media. If you're watching this video on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. So for now, I'll, I just want to thank you all for tuning into the video. And I want to thank the FTC and Gema de las Heras for uh, uh, being here to talk to us about the, this wonderful tool, this wonderful educational tool. Uh, and Gema, we should do this again. We, there, I know the FTC has other projects we'll have to talk about future programs. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Great. Then we will see you all next time. Thanks so much. Thank you.